Hello, my name is Matt Russell. I'm an FX Power Course Instructor here at FXTM. I want to welcome everybody to the daily FX walkthrough. We're going to get started in just a moment. What I'm going to do tonight, as always, is walk through the latest technical report by Jamie Setley at dailyfx.com. So let's go ahead and pull up that report, if you give me one moment here. And this is the same report that I've been using all week. This is Jamie's reports from Monday, um, and we can read the synopsis on top. The euro dollar remains in a bear trend and could fall to a new low below 123 this week. And again, this is the report from Monday, and I just wanted to, to show uh, the accuracy of Jamie's analysis and reading more specifically about the euro dollar. Uh, the euro dollar trend is down as long as price is below channel resistance and 128.61 specifically. And 128.61 is that major uh, 61.8 FIB level. So let's go ahead and bring up the charts. Uh, the first chart is the euro dollar. If you recall in yesterday's report, I was mentioning uh, that spike and how I lost on that trade uh, on the spike above the resistance level. Um, moving forward, uh, again, as Jamie called on Monday. He was calling for, for new lows uh, beneath that the, the 1028 low, and we could say, see that he's on track uh, using that 128.61 area uh, as resistance as well as this shorter-term hourly resistance line. So again, moving forward, I'd maintain that slight bearish bias against the resistance line and look for short trades against that line moving forward where the risk-reward will be favorable. The next chart is dollar-yen. Not much has changed uh, in this pair. Uh, this is the resistance line that I've been using uh, for the past several reports. Actually, um, I was initially using a lot highs that are actually now off the chart, uh, but we can m move that down a little bit here uh, to incorporate the most recent highs for the resistance line. And we can see that prices have been contained uh, beneath the resist resistance line. Hopefully you were able to get an entry or, or two uh, along the resistance line. As I was mentioning, uh, prices seem to be coiling right here, and I was leaning, not even leaning towards, but uh, keeping in mind the possibility that there could be an upside breakout but actually prices went the other way. Keep in mind, dollar-yen is highly correlated with the stock market. The stock market has gone straight down this week, so uh, that's, a, that's the main reason why dollar-yen has been moving lower. But moving forward, keep that uh, slight bearish resistance, keep that slight bearish bias against the resistance line on this chart. Next chart is the Kiwi dollar, and let me zoom out here. And as I, as I was mentioning yesterday, uh, the 53.50 area, I was expecting uh, that to act as support. It was a low confidence trade idea, as I mentioned, but the risk to reward was extremely favorable. And I want to go ahead and show you exactly what I did, how I entered, how I exited. And this area right here, uh, that's the 53.50 area. Uh, and I entered, as I mentioned yesterday's report, at the 54 figure. I placed my stop uh, just beneath the 53.50 area. But because the um, this is the 3 to 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time candle right here, and what I did, I actually, uh, not always a good thing to do, but I removed my stop and wanted to see this candle close beneath that 53.50 area. And what happened is, obviously, we can see, let me zoom in a little closer here, is we had a uh, nice reversal, and prices actually closed back above the 53.50 area, which was a bullish sign. Um, and what I did at that point is I placed my stop just a few pips beneath the low of this candle. The low of this candle was 53.08 uh, and I placed my stop actually at 53.05 and was stopped out on this candle. So in, in essence, I risked 95 pips on the trade, a little a little more than I usually risk on trades. Uh, but the, the key point is, if that line had held, and if the count was valid, and this was a B wave bottom here, uh, prices, again, were expected to go up to the 61 area. So I was risking 95 pips, or roughly 100 pips on the trade, and there was about 700 pips to the upside. Extremely favorable risk to reward. If I was presented with the same situation, um, again, I would do the same exact thing. There, there's nothing wrong. Again, the most important thing in, in trading is learning how to lose, learning how to take your losses, and, and learning how to exit trades properly if you're on the wrong side. And here, I was on the wrong side, but I didn't do anything wrong, um, and, I, I, and I performed well in the heat of the moment. Uh, moving forward, uh, after the close, actually, we can see that the previous support line of 53 
350 actually then acted uh, as resistance. So moving forward, uh, that's what I would look for. I'd look for the 5350 area uh, to act as resistance, at least uh, temporary resistance moving forward. So if prices get up to that 5350 area uh, over the next couple of hours or, or maybe you know through tomorrow, uh, I'd look for a nice, maybe a short-term trade, maybe trying to make 50 pips or so, looking to enter short at that 5350 area and maybe set a limit near the 53 figure. Again, my name is Matt Russell. I'm an FX Power Course instructor here at FXCM. Thanks for listening.